Hi folks, I'm just going to do a quick demonstration video here on how your van operates. So we'll just take you inside here and get you started. So the first thing we're going to look at here is your control panel. Now at the moment it's on, you can switch it off here, so that's just on and off. Over this side here you have your levels, this is your engine battery, you can see there it's about 12 and a half. And that's your leisure battery, it's about 12 and a half. And this is your, on, on the bottom gauge here now, that's your fresh water, it's three quarters full. And your waste is nearly half full. And this is your, that's for switching back on and off your pump. If you want any water in your taps you need this switched on. If the van's plugged in you'll get a yellow light coming on here. And that'll indicate that you have mains coming into the van. Now when you plug when, when you plug in the van, you'll see these going on up. Your leisure battery will go on up to near 14 and your engine as well. So when you start the engine in the van, it'll charge the batteries as well. The only thing we'll say about the batteries is that uh, you need to plug the van in at least two days every fortnight, especially in the winter time, to keep your, your, your batteries charged up. And even over the summertime, if you're not using the van, every, every fortnight, at least two days, you need to plug the van in. So that's just your control panel. So the next thing we're going to look at here is your fridge. You have your main control knob and it's at zero which is off. The first setting is gas and that'll come on yellow yellow there and you can hear the fridge lighting. You have your mains then. So if you're using the van tomorrow you can put it on mains at the house before you leave. And then you have your travelling setting here which is your this shows a battery here. So that's your travelling setting there. That'll keep the fridge cold as you're travelling. So if you're if you're if you're plugged in the campsite you're here. If you're wild camping, you can go onto your gas, and then if you're driving, always put it on here. And then at zero, it's off. And then over this side here is your temperature control. And this is your fridge lock. It's on lock that way, and lock that way. So I'll just, I'll just show you that wee lock. Always make sure you have the lock in, that, in this position here before you close the door. Otherwise, you damage this. You can see the way it goes back that way, and that's your door closed again. Um, so that's your fridge. Moving up here onto your oven and grill. It just opens here at the front, press on that red bit, and you can see here you have your grill on this side, you see it lighting there, and your oven on that side. So that's your oven on this side here, off at the middle, and that's your grill on that side, and a zero it's off. So the next thing we're going to look at here is just your heating. Now if you want hot water on your mains, it's that button there. So that's the same as your immersion what you have at home, that only that just works when you're plugged in. And that's only for heating the water. Now if you want to heat the water on gas, you'll have to use this knob up here. And this knob heats the van as well. So at the moment, you can see it's off. If you want to heat the van, you bring it down to the first, the, the flame there. And that's heating the van. Down the bottom there is heating the van and the water at 60 degrees. Now if you're heating the, heating the water or heating the van here on this setting, you can pick your temperature between 1 and 9. And usually in around 5 or 6 is sufficient to heat the van. And it'll cut in and out itself. And a green light means everything's okay. If you get a red light inside there, it means your, your gas is probably switched off or has ran out. So you need to just check that. And then in the summer you just want hot water. You have 40 degrees or 60 degrees. Now anytime you're heating water, you'll get a yellow light coming on here. And that indicates that the water is heating. Once that yellow light goes out, it means it's heated the water to whatever temperature you've asked for. So if, if you set it at 60 and that yellow light goes out, you've heated the water as much as you can at 60. So 40 is really for in around the showers, or in around the, the, the sinks, and 60 is really for having a shower. And that's it switched off again. And somebody has left a wee explanation of what I'm after telling you up here on a wee card. So that's handy to, to see. And then you can open and close your vents for your heating, as you, as you want the heat to come out in different areas. So your toilet here is fairly straightforward. You have your shutter open and closed here, your flush button here, and then you have indicators that come up here to tell you when the cassette is full. Your hob just operates with a lighter, and there's wee safeties in each ring, so the gas won't come out until the flame's lit. And it's just the three knobs here, so it's fairly straightforward. So you can see here, I'm just going to show you how to make up this bed. You can separate the leg of the table, take the bottom part of the leg off, and put the table, the table is now on the top rung, we're going to put it down onto this bottom one here. So that's the table down now, waiting for the cushions. And the first cushion we use is the spare blue one, that's in the wardrobe. And then your big cushion goes in here. And that's the bed on that side, and then the bed on this side here, you can see the two clips here. They just come out, and this piece here slides out here. 
at the bottom. So you can see here that's hopping it up, it's slid out there and you have your two cushions there. So that's your bed at the front. So in and out that seat now you have your fresh water tank. And to empty the fresh water tank, you just screw off the red lid. And if you look in there you'll see a stopper and you pull that stopper out and that'll drain the fresh water tank. Looking, we're just looking in your wardrobe here. At the bottom here is your two 20 volt trips. And that's the way they should be up the way. There's only one trip. And then here you have your, your booster. For your TV aerial, uh, which is what you do is you loosen off this nut here at the top, you lift this up and down, and you're going for the greenest color you can get on that. So, once you get a green color on your booster, that's the best signal you can get, and then you just pull that down and close it for traveling. Now, that's uh, you plug your TV aerial in here, and you have the two different sizes of 12 volt sockets here the big one and the small one and you have your mains as well. So that's where your TV comes out of here. So just moving outside the van here, we're inside your gas locker. To so switch off the gas, you'll just turn that valve at the top clockwise till it stops, and that's the, that's the gas closed. And then you can loosen this nut here clockwise, so it loosens that way to loosen, and anti-clockwise to tighten. And there's a spanner there for you there, and you have your spare bottle as well, and both of them are full. So that's all you have to do is change your, change your gas, switch off the valve at the top, and turn that clockwise to listen. So moving along your van here, you have a security handle and your security lock. You have a barbecue point here, and the attachment for that is inside the drawer. And you put your barbecue hose onto that. You have your mains hook up beside that. And moving on up here, we have our the toilet cassette. It clips, it just clips out here, and it pulls out. Clips back in again. So straightforward enough, and you just. Screw off your lid here to empty it. And so around this side here now, in your garage. The important thing in here now is in behind this white cap are your drain valves for your heating and all your pipes. And you can see the two valves there, and they're open, they're closed at the moment. The yellow one's down, so it's closed, and the red one's up, and that's closed. So if you want to winterize the van in the winter time, you'd lift this one up like that. And you push this one down like that. So that'll drain out all the water and your heater and all your taps inside. Now what you do at that stage is you so you're you've lifted the yellow one up and you push the red one down like that. And you switched off your pump inside. At this stage you'd open your taps inside, the three taps, between in between hot and cold, and if you have to blow into the taps to blow any excess water out of the taps themselves, if it's getting very, very cold. So you can do that yourself to want to raise the van. When you come back to the, when you come back after one raising the van, close the valves again like so, and fill up your fresh water tank again, and put on your tap on hot, and it'll blow all the air out of the heater before you get a free flow. And once you get a free flow, then you're back in action. Now this valve here will drop at two degrees, so it could drop at any time of the year. So any time you have any issues with your your water pressure in any of your taps inside, always come out and make sure that's up. Now if it won't stay up if it's too cold. Um, you're using the van in the winter time. If you switch on your heating, that'll stay up first time every time. So that's the that's the wee top there. Switch on your heating if that valve won't stay up if you're if you're using the van in the winter time. So just behind your your back wheel there on the left hand side, you can see that's your wastewater valve, and there's a handle on top of it for opening and closing. And that's just the exhaust for your heater. You'll see steam and stuff coming out of that when it's running. Along here then is your fresh water fill and your diesel fill. So with them with them caps being so close together I would be sure that you don't put diesel in here or some guy in the filling station doesn't do that on you. Uh, just keep an eye on that. And then on this locker down here you have your your two leisure batteries. So just moving into your cab here now underneath the passenger seat you have your your main control box and this is all your 12 volt fuses for all the stuff in the back of the van. Your pumps and lights and all the stuff in the back. So that's just that's where that lives. Your bonnet pulls here. And a quick wee run with your engine here. You have your window wash here, your power steering fluid, your brake fluid, and this is your engine coolant water. Down the front here then you have your dipstick and your oil filler cap. And if you ever have to jump start the van, underneath this wee cover here, you have your point for your positive on the jump lead, and your negative goes on here. 
So that's if you ever have to jump start the van that lives in there underneath that wee cover. So don't ever touch anything onto that, that's positive all the time. And that's why there's a cover on it. So I'll just move back around. Tires now we'd always try to run 55 in the front and 50 in the back. Uh, it's just more of a comfort sort of setting than anything else. So moving inside your cab here, there's just a couple of wee bits. You have your aircon button here for bringing on your aircon. You always have to have your fan on and have it a cold. And the radio, you can see there's a wee button here in the corner. And we'd recommend that you just clip the front face of the radio out when you're not using the van. So anytime you're parking the van up and you're not using it, clip off the face of the stereo and that'll make sure you're not running down on any batteries. And you have a reverse camera here that comes on when you go into reverse. So also in the boot here you have a blow up kit, there's a compressor inside that and fluid for fixing your puncture. And there's a little bag of curtains and stuff and your carpet set on here as well. So you can see here your bike rack, it just flips down here, just give it a pull down, it flips down. We put all new clips on here for you as well, these here are all brand new. And new ends as well, and that just clips back up again. So you can see here now I have your arm screwed out. And I'm just going to show you how to put the legs down. You see the leg here now, we'll just, it's, it's hidden on here in the front of this. You just pull out the leg and it clips out here in this end. And you can see it comes around here and that's it dropping down. And then you can lock it, lock it here in this end here and raise your awning up and down and that's the wee lock on it. So you can see what I've done there, that's that leg. And do the same on the far side. So to put that back in again, loosen the wee knob here, bring it to the top, tighten it, and then bring your leg right the whole way around. And you can see the way it drops in. See the way it's going in there? Make sure it drops in there, and it's in flush here. This is an important bit, that it goes in there like that. So the front of your awning has to be flush there, but not sticking out before you screw it back in again. So we'll just screw it back in here for you. So the last thing we're going to show you is your jack and wheel braces underneath the, this is the driver's seat. The front of this here just drops down clips on there and that's your that's your jack and wheel brace on there and your swivel for your seat is this here it just lifts up and down so as you're sitting on the seat you can pull that up and swivel the seat around and it's the same on the far seat as well so folks I think I've sort of covered most of the stuff you're going to need to know um, if there's anything you need at any time at all you can always ring us uh, inside this blue bag is all your paperwork and test certificates and your service histories and stuff like that uh, we keep all your service records here on our computers as well and uh, I think there's nearly everything covered at that, but we'll see how you get on. And if you need anything, as I say, give us a ring. And the best of luck in your new van and happy camping.